Welcome to another update from Force 13 on the developing a Tropical Low Invest 97S and within the next few hours it should be upgraded to Category 1 Cyclone Wallace. Tropical Cyclone may develop north of the Kimberley case later today or on Saturday and a period of gales possible along the North Kimberley case. Bureau of Meteorology's Tropical Cyclone Warning Centre has a warning zone in place for the Cockatoo Island and the Canaloon Buru. And watch a zone is Cockatoo Island to Beagle Bay, not including Derby. At 8am Australian Western Standard Time, the low sustained winds in the centre of 55 km per hour with wind gusts at 85 km per hour. Located within 55 km, 11.6 degrees south, 128.3 degrees east, 230 km west of Perlang Gimby and 350 km north north east of Kalimbaru. And the tropical low is tracking southwest at 13 km an hour. Gales are not expected in coastal parts this morning or afternoon. Gales with gusts to 100 km per hour may develop in exposed coastal parts between Kalambaru, Kokatu Island from late Friday or early Saturday if the system tracks further south than expected. And here's the latest track chart on the system. And it could be upgraded to tropical cyclone status uh, later today. At the time of uh, doing this update, it's reaching 1400 hours Australian Eastern Standard Time. Perth is two hours behind. And the BI Meteorology WA Gale warning for the North Kimberley case. Strong wind warning for the Nicolou, Gascon, Esperance, Ikula case. And they've cancelled this morning the one for the Pilbara and Albany case. Now we have a look at the NOAA floaters. The Joy Typhoon Warning Centre is now on board. They have Invest uh, 97S as Tropical Cyclone 23S. And it's currently located 11.4 degrees south, 128.4 degrees east. And 165 nautical miles west northwest of Darwin, tracking west southwest at four knots over the last six hours. Animated multispectral satellite imagery shows a fast consolidating system, all but with its deep central convection sheared southwestward partially exposing the low level circulation. The initial position is based on the partially exposed low level circulation centre and on a ragged and elongated circulation feature in the radar loop from the Darwin with fair confidence. The initial intensity of 35 knots is based on the Vorak intensity of T 2.5, 35 knots from ADRM and extrapolated from a recent SNAP image showing 32 knots. 
upper level analysis indicates the system is under moderate to strong vertical wind shear, 20 25 knots, that is offset by excellent radial outflow with a strong poleward channel. Sea surface temperatures 29 Celsius are also conducive. The cyclone is currently tracking along the northwest periphery of a subtropical high to the south east anchored over central Australia. The 23S will continue on its current track. Then turn more southwestward after 72 hours as the steering ridge adjusts north eastward. Favourable conditions will promote steady intensification to a peak at this point in time, 70 knots by 96 hours aided by sea surface temperatures rising up to 30 Celsius in the South Indian Ocean off Port Hedland. Afterward, increasing vertical wind shear will trigger a weakening trend down to 50 knots by the 120 hour mark. The available numerical models are in a general agreement with the overall track with ECMWF, the right of the track outlier beyond 48 hours and left gem the left of the track outlier beyond 36 hours. In view of these and given the formative nature of the cyclone there's low confidence in the JTWC's warning track and wave height 10 feet. Now we have a look at various uh, tracks and models and we start off with the GEFS and the uh, tracks really haven't changed and uh, there's uh, greater alignment uh, between the models and the main one is in black and the others are the outliers. The GFS model. HWRF parent. And whilst we look at the models, uh, updated position, 11 decimal 4 degrees south, 128 decimal 4 degrees east, winds 35 knots, central pressure around 1000 millibars. The Bureau of Meteorology is uh, indicating probably 990 millibars later today. The ICON model. And we're keeping an eye on the Cape York Peninsula region. That's the eastern side of the Arafura Sea. There's a weak low pressure system that is going to track across Cape York in a westerly direction. The Bureau of Meteorology here in Queensland has issued a flood watch and we have a look at the latest wind shear. The wind shear is a bit of an enemy to the tropical low or tropical cyclone according to the Joy Typhoon Warning Center. 24 hour shear tendency. The 850 minute bar vorticity, the vorticity is actually strengthening when you look at the, the colouring colouring, and the intensity scale it's the right hand side of the screen. 
And here's the latest uh, BI Meteorology's total forecast for rain. This is uh, the eight-day period outlook. The rainfall scale is on the right-hand side of the screen. And we will uh, continue to bring the latest uh, information on this developing uh, tropical uh, system to the north of Western Australia, on the west coast of Australia, via the AU and this channel. You can follow Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com with the latest. You can also find our YouTube page, you're probably there already, but if not, subscribe if you haven't so far. You can also find our Facebook page, Force 13 All in Text, and it's at Force 13 on Twitter if you'd like to get in touch with us on there. You can also help the project become even better by enjoying the benefits of patronage. You can find out more information about how to become a patron and what those benefits are at patreon.com forward slash force13. You can also add force13 on Skype and fool13 at extension 9094 on Discord for tropical weather chat. <laughs> 